soon after reforms, chief advisor tells NHK. Government forms commission over job entry age. BNP to give proposals to all six reform commissions. Those were the headlines. Good evening, viewers. I'm Nafisa Nawal with English Bulletin. Chief Advisor of the Interim Government, Dr. Mohamed Yunus, has said the Interim Government's job is to carry out reforms as soon as possible and the government will hold an election as soon as it is ready. He made the comments in an interview with Japan's Public Broadcasting Corporation and HK in New York, referring to students who played a major role to overthrow the Sheikh Hasina led government. Professor Yunus said young people gave their lives during the revolution. He indicated his stance in of including the young generation in policy making. The chief advisor said Bangladesh look forward to support from Japan, its biggest donor during this very critical period. He emphasized that Japan's cooperation is essential in rebuilding the country's economy and to uphold democracy. HK. But as quickly as possible, because we are not here to stay long. Uh, our task is to reform and hold the election. As soon as we are ready for that, we will hold the election. This government has to succeed. The Ministry of Public Administration has formed a committee on the demand of making age limit of applying for government jobs to 35. The committee will be headed by former advisor of the caretaker government, Abdul Muid Chaudhary. The committee has been asked to submit its report within seven days. Meanwhile, people demanding the job application age limit to 35 were seen staging demonstration in front of the chief advisor's residence on Monday, which they termed Grand Rally the final phase of their movement. BNP will place specific proposals to the six reform commissions formed by the interim government. Standing committee member of the party, Salahuddin Ahmed, made the disclosure at an event in the capital on Monday. Meanwhile, addressing a separate event in the capital, BNP Vice Chairman Samsu Zaman Dudu said India themselves will have to make decision whether they will be with democracy of Bangladesh or with the killers of democracy. A Dhaka court has withdrawn arrest warrant issued against journalist Shofiq Rahman in former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's son, Shoji Wajid Joy, abduction and murder attempt case. Dhaka Chief Metropolitan Magistrate Court Mohammed Mahboobul Alam granted the plea with to withdraw the arrest warrant against Shofiq Rahman after a hearing on the issue. Earlier, Shofiq Rahman surrendered before Dhaka's Chief Metropolitan Magistrate Court in Shoji Wajid Joy, abduction and murder attempt case at 10 a.m on Monday. In his reaction, Shofiq Rahman said the false case has been filed to harass him as he refused to serve the interest of Amelie. He demanded massive overhauling of the judiciary. Earlier, editor of Amar Desh Mahmoudur Rahman was sent to jail after surrendering before a Dhaka court on Sunday in the same case. Now a short break. We will be back soon with... Israel's strike in Lebanon continues 105 killed. Kanpur tests edge on an interesting finish. Welcome back. You're watching 18 News English Bulletin. 
The High Court has ordered to shift the Shagur Rooney murder probe to a high-powered task force exiting Rab from the probe. The Home Ministry has been ordered to form this task force comprising experienced people. The court also ordered to submit the probe report within six months. The court issued the order as state pleaded for withdrawing Rapid Action Battalion from the probe of the case. A High Court bench of Justice Farah Mahmoub and Justice Mahbubul Islam issued the order after hearing on the issue earlier on Sunday afternoon after getting appointed as lawyer of the plaintiff of Shagoruni murder case. Advocate Shishir Monir said appeal will be made to carry out the probe through police Bureau of Investigation. After Sunday's High Court order, Advocate Shishin Munir, however, formation of high power task force will expedite the probe of the case. Now, news around the world. Israel has continued deadly attacks across Lebanon, including Beirut's Kola area, have killed 105 people in a fresh attack. Three members of Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine, PFLP, group were among the deceased. Overnight on Sunday and into early Monday morning, Israel has carried out non-stop attacks bombardment across Lebanon with Kola district in its first attack beyond southern suburbs. At least 359 injured over the past 24 hours. Mastics, Leninist and Arab nationalist group PFLP confirmed three of its leaders were killed in Kola attack. Besides, Israel has attacked Yemeni port cities of Hodeida, Rosh Isa targeting power plants and seaport. Its fighter jets launched wave of attacks on Baker Valley sites, claiming Hezbollah's weapons storage. Meanwhile, as U.S. Senator said, the bomb used by Israel to kill Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah in Beirut last week was a U.S.-made guided weapon. Neither Pentagon nor Israel made any comment. The toll from the major monsoon floods and landslides around Nepal has risen to at least 193. People, police officials reported Monday at least 50 others were missing and many others injured. Himalayan nat nation inundated with entire valley around capital Kathmandu after two days intense rainfall in more than two decades. Kathmandu has temporarily cut off from the rest of the country after landslides blocked highways. People have jumped from one roof to another to escape rising waters as thousands of homes flooded. Meanwhile, crews continue to carry out rescues on helicopters and inflatable rafts. 10,000 police officers with volunteers and army have been mobilized as part of search and rescue efforts. About 3,600 people have been rescued so far. Nepalese government has emphasized more on search, rescue operation and banned driving at night in Kathmandu Valley. We wish we will take a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching English Bulletin. Now sports news. Day 4 of Bangladesh India's second test in Kanpur was an eventful one as Bangladesh ended at 26 for 2 in the third innings, trailing by 26 runs. India has declared at 285 for 9 after bundling out Tigers for 233. At Kanpur's Green Park Stadium, Monday Tigers resumed their overnight score on of 107 for 3. Mominal continued good work and brought up a fine 100. Without the required support, he returned unbeaten on 107 of 194 balls with help of 17 fours and 1 six. In India's innings after hitting the fastest team, 50 opener Jaswal helped India achieve another record on day four. However, Jaswal became Hassan's victim for 72 runs. Sakib thereafter sent off Gill and also dismissed Pant in his next over. 
further. Rahul picked up his 50 pairing with Virat, became Sakib's third victim and Kohli stopped three runs short. At the day's end, India announced their innings at 285 for before ending the bulletin, the top stories once again. Polls soon after reforms, chief advisor tells NHK. Government forms commission over job entry age. BNP to give proposals to all six reform commissions. Israeli strike in Lebanon continues 105 killed. Kanpur test hinge on an interesting finish. That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for being with us.